So welcome back to this week. Um, for this, the first case for this week is the first for Friday. Um, in today's case, we're actually going to Chicago, just like we were in two of the cases for last week. And so, in this, okay, so in this case, actually, no one else should know, happened in 2006. Uh, if you have any information that you want to add to the story, that you either knew of the victim or victims, because there's multiple, or our killer, definitely let me know. Source, um, I guess, sort. I think I'll have like two sources for the story, but of course, sources that work always. And let's go get started. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed. Think you're something out of my nightmares. Standing right there. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, then will you get bored of killing? Pamela, yeah, Pamela Miles was born on August seventh, nineteen sixty eight. In nineteen ninety four, she received an. She had apparently committed armed robbery, and instead of going to jail like most people do, she was sent to a mental institution and was eventually released. It said that she had a history of mental illness, and perhaps that's why she got sent to a mental institution instead of like prison. And so then, like nothing else is mentioned that robbery. It's just. I saw she went to jail in, in 94 for armed robbery. That was pretty much it. So then on April 3rd, 2006, 59-year-old Anna Mae Davis was found dead in her home. Then that same month, but on the 27th, so April 27th, 76-year-old Everlina Brum was found dead five blocks away from Anna Davis's home. And so then they both died from blunt force injuries to an axe. So, of course, for their murders to be that close and they both died... Pretty much the same way, obviously, those murders are going to be connected. So then on the 25th, which is two days before Everlina died, a neighbor would be told by Everlina herself when she was still alive that she saw Pamela with a hammer and demanding money for her. So of course, Pamela is obviously getting questions by neighbors that would claim that she was seen walking around with the axe after both the murders. Uh, Pamela would deny this. Her home would be searched with permission of a family member, and an axe, an axe and a hammer would be found, but it couldn't be used to tie her to the murder. So, I guess there was like no evidence on it, or I guess it wasn't the acts and murder that was used in the actual murders. It just, it couldn't be tied to any, either of the murders. However, they did find a paper dated Mothers Who Wouldn't Make It to Mother's Day. Because, you know, Mother's Day is like in May, and this is like in April. And then there was a list of initials and the word dead next to each one. And so then the words Anne and Bra were found, which is believed to refer to Anna and Eve. My Aunt Eve and Everlita. Now Everlita, the bra. I guess, I guess she didn't know how like how to uh, abbreviate Everlita, so she put her last name, which remember is Brahmi. And there was even said to be a little encouragement note on the bottom that said congratulations to me. Um, how she knew the ladies, because believe it or not, she actually knew these women. Uh, apparently, they all attended the same church, but Pamela had apparently had issues with the pastor and certain members of the church. And both of our victims are apparently some of those certain um, members of the church. So then in 2007, she had stabbed someone and was charged with aggravated battery. They survived, of course. She was found guilty but mentally ill and sent us to a mental health facility in El Elgin, Illinois, until 2014. And so then on January 17, 2011, detectives went to Pamela and talked about the murders of Annie and everyone. And the murder of a man that may be connected possibly making Pamela still a killer, but she refused. Uh, three days later, she confessed that she killed the two women, but not the man, to a worker. Even though apparently the man was killed in a similar situation to Annie and Everly. So then she was in charge with two counts of first degree murder, and she is currently seven, serving 27 years for both murders. So yeah, there goes a serial killer who is, a, well, a possible serial killer who's only serving less than 30 years for the murders that she has committed. So, of course, let me know what you think down below. Uh, there, of course, was understandably a lot of outrage when she did get her 20 years. Just let me know what you think. Was she actually mentally ill? Did she know what she was doing? Why was she only targeting elderly people? Did she genuinely have a problem with these people? Or was she just, like, what was going on? Of course, so let me know what you think down below as always. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. So with the play dead, will you regret everything that you did, that you said? I don't think you understand what you're doing, and my heart's black and blue from the bruising. I feel like when I'm with you, I'm losing. I feel like you think that this amusing, sitting there.
gaslight and confusing Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry, the conclusion Even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you loved me like I love you, it's stupid When I'm alone with you, I never feel lucid I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid I wish when I first saw you, I knew this When I'm with you, I feel so useless I feel diluted, my heart's been wounded Silhouettes of you are like a dawn Never really know just what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palm Play with me like that sand a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever wanna give me wings You don't ever wanna set me free But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead Baby you'll get